Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about the new 1895 Marlin, and it's being produced by Ruger, and it's the SBL model, which I have sitting here in all of its glory. This is a gun that was uh, first to market with the reintroduction of the Marlin brand under the Ruger banner. Previously, Remington had owned the Marlin brand name, and, and in my opinion, they had completely wrecked the Marlin brand, along with other things that Remington was wrecking, which is why they went out of business, and Ruger was able to snatch up the brand name of Marlin and bring this bad boy back to market. I'm pretty excited about this rifle, and I want to explain to you in this video why this rifle excites me, what I think is so fun about this gun, or what makes me think that this thing really has kind of a useful purpose. I mean, everybody's talking about lever actions right now. You know, we did a video on a highly customized um, Henry rifle in 38 Special slash 357. That was a fun video. Uh, 38 Special, maybe not the most practical cartridge, 4570, has a lot of applications. But before we get into today's video, guys, I want to invite you to come by and check out Second Legacy. It's a brand new channel that's a collaborative effort between me and Braden from Langley Outdoor. We've come together to do a channel specifically about our Second Amendment rights and politics. And so please check it out. I will put a link in the video description below. And with that being said, let's get started with today's video here on the Military Arms Channel talking about the 1895 Marlin SBL 4570 Government Lever Action Rifle. So why a lever gun? Why am I excited about the 1895 Marlin? Well, it chambers a massive cartridge, a cartridge that was popular just before the turn of the century. The 1900s is what I'm talking about, not 2000s. And the cartridge was popular as a black powder cartridge, but as it came into the you know, 20th century, the cartridge kind of petered out, but it still has its applications. With smokeless powder, the 4570 is an absolute artillery shell. It just has so much power and so much potential. But self-loading rifles don't really favor cartridges like a straight-walled case with a rim like the 4570. So a lever action makes a lot of sense. Same thing with handguns, right? 9mm, 10mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, 357 SIG, all very practical cartridges and handguns that are very practical. Revolvers, in my opinion, are antiques. The self-loading firearm, the self-loading pistol, replaced them in terms of the best option for personal defense and everyday carry. That's not to say that revolvers are useless. They most certainly aren't. A lot of people still carry them, and I'm not begrudging those folks whatsoever. But if you take a look at guns like this one, the Smith & Wesson that I have here in my hand, this one chambers 460 Smith & Wesson. This is artillery. Good luck finding an auto-loading pistol that can chamber a cartridge that comes anywhere near the power of this 460 or even the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, another large framed revolver that has all sorts of applications. I love this thing. So again, sometimes you have to kind of go back in time and look at you know, more traditional solutions when you're wanting to fire a really, really large cartridge like the 4570, or in this case, the 460 Smith & Wesson. Woo! <laughs> Jeez. Man, shooting the stump down there, I just see just stuff flying, and that's 100 yards away. Such a cannon, lots of fun. The 1895 Marlin was introduced originally in 1895. It stayed in production until about 1917, when other cartridges like the 30 6 and stuff like that started to take over, cartridges that were specifically designed to be smokeless powder. So the old black powder originally, 4570, kind of petered out in popularity, and America moved on to more modern cartridges. But the 4570 lingered on in many people's you know, gun safes and f going to the firing range and gun bags and whatnot because people just like nostalgia. Plus, modern 4570 cartridges are capable of some pretty extreme performance. There's plenty of boutique ammunition manufacturers out there that offer some really, really hot stuff, and this rifle can handle it. And, of course, then you have the factory stuff that you can pick up pretty much at any popular gun store, which is what we're out here shooting today. And this is from Hornady. This is lever action specific 4570. And there is a reason for that. And we'll talk about that in today's video. But here's one of the cartridges. It's a 325 grain bullet going about 2,000 feet per second. We haven't put it over the chronograph just yet. But you can shoot 500 plus grain pills out of this thing. And, um, and you can bump that performance up as considerably. You got a lot of case volume in here that can be used in the 4570. So, uh, yeah, it's a very, very capable cartridge. Now, as I mentioned, it is a straight-walled cartridge. It has a rim on it, so it's not going to, you know, do so well in a, a gun that loads itself. 
lever actions, therefore, are the way to go if you want to use the 4570. So let's talk about how I have this new Marlin all set up, and then we'll talk about the features of the gun. So on top of the rifle, I have one of the new primary arms scopes, and this is available as a, at the time of this recording as a pre-order. And this is their new SLX 1-6 to power. LPVO has the ACSS Nova reticle in it. Uh, it has like a little fire dot. It has a red dot fiber optic reticle in it. And it is an extremely clear scope. So this is a brand new product. It comes with the throw ring on it with the extended lever here. So you can easily adjust the magnification. You have the ocular side lens that you can bring into sharp focus. And then you have your turret caps up here. And you can zero those out just with a simple set screw, three set screws on each turret. And then over here we have our illumination dial with our CR2032 battery underneath it. And this is how you pick the illumination that you want. Very nicely done. I really like the fire dot on this thing uh, because it, it really uh, brings your eye right to focus on it. So it's a really, really neat setup. Now this is a primary arms scope mount that I have on here and you'll notice that the scope is just clearing the ghost ring rear sight back here. So you do need to let it set up just a little bit high. Now you can get a lower scope mount but you're gonna have to push the ocular side lens in front of this if you want to get it any lower and you're really gonna have to crane your neck. I mean this for me is comfortable but even for Jason this is still just a little bit too far forward. I've seen some guys on the internet pushing the scopes way forward. You'd have to put a handgun scope on it if you want to go all the way out. So very, very nice scope. Out here on the end, we have a Griffin armament suppressor. And this one obviously is capable of handling 45 caliber bullets <laughs> because you need quite a large bore with a 4570. Now, that's how I have this thing kitted out. Now let's talk about some of the specifics of this particular gun in terms of how it's made and all that good stuff. I forgot to mention the name of the Griffin Armament can that we're using. It's called the Bushwhacker 46. So and it's actually one of the better big bore cans that we've ever played with out there. And it certainly uh, is doing great things with this gun when we show you some of the accuracy potential of the, this particular rifle. So let's start off back here. So really, this gun hasn't changed a whole lot from the original offering that was made by Remington. Looks just like it for the most part. So we have the gray laminate wood back here, a nice thick rubber recoil pad that's nice and soft. On my example that I have here, the wood fits very nicely around the tang of the receiver there. No large gaps or anything. So that's pretty nicely done for a standard production gun. Now we have a machined large loop action here. So this large loop is going to be really nice for gloved hands in the winter, things like that. And we have our hammer back here with a cross block safety. So you can put the safety on, you have to have the hammer in half cock, and then you can put the safety on if the hammer's all the way at rest. You cannot put the safety on, you have to draw it back and put the safety on. You can do that with a live round of the chamber if you're gonna walk around like if you're hunting or something like that to ready the gun then. You just have to cock it, knock that safety off and she's ready to go. So she's all stainless steel, which looks really good. Now the bolt is nickel plated and fluted, and so that bolt with that nickel plating is just really, really smooth. So that's nice. Many times with old Marlins, like before Remington got them, I was into cowboy action shooting in the 90s, and we would sit and run those actions a lot. I'd just sit and watch TV and run the action and smooth the action out. This one's pretty darn smooth right out of the box, which is really, really nice. So the fitment looks really sharp on it. Uh, the, the gray laminate wood furniture looks really good, nicely fit. Coming out here, we have a Picatinny rail, and again, this was on the original Remington offering as well, a 1913 rail that comes all the way out. Some folks would say that's ugly. You can get these without that rail. I specifically wanted the rail in the ghost ring sights because I wanted to do something like put an LPVO on it. Now, originally I put a red dot sight on it and we did some shooting with it, extremely accurate. I thought, well, let's put this new uh, ACSS Nova reticle system on there uh, just to see how uh, accurate it is. And then we were shooting it out to 350 yards as well. Coming out here, we have a 19-inch barrel, which is a half inch longer than the original Remington offering, and that's because we have 11 16 by 24 thread out here on the end, which then allows us to put that Griffin Armament Bushwhacker 46 on the end of the barrel. We still have a fiber optic front sight, so it glows nicely in daylight. We have a magazine tube underneath the barrel. This holds six rounds in the tube. It has a loading gate right here on the side. You can put a seventh round 
in the chamber, so it will hold a total of seven rounds, fully loaded. The gun empty weighs about 7.3 pounds. Again, has that 19 inch barrel. That barrel is cold hammer forged, and that gives it really, really nice consistency and accuracy. Now, I know you guys are gonna say, well, button rifling can be just as good as cold hammer forged, vice versa, that's absolutely true. It's all in the quality and uh, the quality assurance in terms of how well a barrel works, either cold hammer forged, button cut, or whatever. Has a one and 20, a right hand twist, six grooves on the rifling, which suits the big, heavy, slow moving bullet quite nicely. So those are pretty much all the specifics on the 1895 SBL. You can see here we have sling studs on the bottom side. The old Remingtons had a plastic cap here at the wrist of the stock. That cap is gone. Now we have a laser engraved Marlin logo down there, which looks really, really sharp. And we also changed the bullseye from black to red for the new Ruger ownership. And that bullseye was a carryover from the original Marlin. And so the Remington, I'm sorry, the Ruger Marlin rifles will have a prefix on the serial number of RM, which I thought was an, an interesting touch as well. So Ruger's very proud of this, and I think for very good reason, because with the shooting we've been doing with it, the gun is truly impressive. So let's do some shooting with it and show you what we're talking about. So we're shooting some lever action specific ammunition. Let me tell you why that's important when you're loading your lever action and getting ready to shoot it. That's because lever actions typically have a tube under the barrel that stores the ammunition like this in the tube. And if you take a look at that, you might see a potential problem there. You have the point of the bullet touching the primer of the cartridge in front of it. Under recoil, it's not unheard of with bullets that are not properly designed for lever actions for it to actually, under recoil, hit that primer of the cartridge in front of it and cause a detonation in the magazine tube of the rifle. Now, some rifles will store the rounds in, in the tube like this, kind of offsetting them, staggering them, so that the points aren't touching the primers in front of them. But in the case of this ammunition, this is just a polymer tip. Many times you'll see lever action ammo that just has a blunt nose on it. So uh, that way you're not at risk of setting off that primer. So I just wanted to point that out. Now the gun loads from the side. We'll take six rounds. Now I could put a seventh one into the chamber. It's always good for shaving off your thumbnail. All right, I could put a seventh one in there, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just load six, put my ears on here. One other thing, you'll see me out here with, these are some new binos from Primary Arms. These are 10 by 42s, and these are a new product for 2023, just like the scope that I showed you on the rifle earlier. So if you're looking for some affordable glass, that's an option now. All right, so we got a target down at 100 yards. Get her all set up here, see if we can get some decent groups here for you guys. Shoot at the face. Kind of sitting low on my bag here. I mean, that's incredible. Basically just put all the rounds, all six rounds, just a little bit high. I gotta dial that scope down just a wee bit. But yeah, and the recoil with those 325 grain Hornady loads isn't that bad. I could shoot it all day long. I do have a winter coat on, but we also have this big rubber bump uh, pad back here. So that helps to absorb some of that recoil. Fun gun to shoot and reliable. The only thing you wanna do with, re with lever actions, just make sure, now you notice I was running into the table in the bag, you wanna make sure that you cycle the action smartly and swiftly so that uh, you kick that spent case out and you be sure to lift that next case up so that it can be chambered by the bolt going home. But other than that, the reliability on this thing has been outstanding.
Let's do some shooting at 200 yards. Now, what's interesting is I read a blog post about this rifle, and the person that wrote it said they wouldn't trust this rifle past 100 yards because of bullet drop. And I thought that was pretty funny. You just need to learn your bullet drop. The 4570 cartridge is more than capable of accuracy at extended ranges. So I'm going to take a um, three-shot group out at 200 using this Hornady ammunition. And one thing I want to point out is like when you go to load the gun, I can put the safety on, but if I pull the trigger with the safety on, it won't fire because the cross block is blocking the hammer's travel so it can't make contact with the firing pin. All right, just wanted to point that out. So you get a click no bang after you run the action. That's why. Yeah, I really want to use a rear bag and go for a real group here. I don't know. Let's see what we can get. All right. I don't know what that looks like because I can't spot my own shots because of the recoil. <laughs> we'll have to defer to the uh, scope cam. So we have a rifle dueling tree from Challenge Target downrange at 200 yards, and I'm going to see if I can hit the flapper. Now we have about a 7 to 10 mile an hour south wind, which is pushing the bullet to the right. So I do have to hold a little bit to the left. Keep in mind, we've got a big, huge bullet that's lumbering along at less than 2,000 feet per second at that range. And so wind is going to have an effect on that bullet. So that's the other thing you're going to have to compensate for with a cartridge like this, but it's totally doable. There you go. I mean, what a smooth shooting gun. I mean, it's just so much fun shooting that big old cartridge. Such a smooth action. Man, Ruger really did a good job on this rifle. So the 1895 SBL that you see here retails for $13.99, and they are kind of hard to find right now. So you're going to have to shop around and look for them, but they are in production and Ruger is shipping them out. So you can get your hands on them if you shop around and look for one. In terms of fit, finish, and quality, it seems to mirror uh, the reviews that I've seen other people mention. The thing seems to be really, really well made. It seems like all the parts are fit nicely. It's certainly super reliable. Accuracy is more than I expected. I mean, this thing is incredibly accurate. Originally, we had put this little hollow sun red dot sight on it, and I was doing some shooting with it, saw the groups at 100 yards, like, holy cow, that's impressive. And that's what made me put this uh, Primary Arms 1-6 to LPVO on here, because I really wanted to squeeze the accuracy out of it. Even with the red dot, just doing holds in space, we're able to hit out to 350 yards with the thing. So in terms of accuracy, fit and finish quality, all that stuff, perfect. Ruger simply knocked it out of the park. So would I recommend it? Yeah, I, I think this is a really, really cool gun. If you're into lever actions, you're looking for that perfect 4570, a guide gun, if you will, you know, with this pick rail on top, the ability to put a suppressor on it, I suppress everything. It's just an amazing rifle would make for a great guide gun, hunting rifle, or just kind of an expensive plinker because 4570 isn't exactly inexpensive. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, you can ask us questions down in the comment section. We do try to stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer any questions you guys may have. If you'd like to support us here on the Military Arms channel, the best possible way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. You have a thanks button underneath the video player you're watching right now. You can hit that thanks button and send us a few bucks. Helps keeps us going in the age of demonetization. And... Also, please swing by, check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 15 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Last four rounds, go to 150.
Oh yeah. I mean, that thing is just sailing those monster bullets downrange with really surprising accuracy. Love it. Good job, Ruger.